Good day everyone, welcome to our tutorial. We'll learn about image post-process retouch using Adobe Photoshop. Photoshop is one of the most widely used post-process software in the industry. Today, we will learn some basic post-production enhancement to retouch one of our projects. Here is a low-rise residential building compound, and we will retouch this picture to produce a professional image ready for presentations. We have here our available raw image we have imported. I don't want the background sky for this one, so I'll show you how to edit this sky to change the background. From layer, we go to the channel. Click on alpha 1 to get the black and white element for masking. Hold control, click on alpha channel and white 1 or house area will be selected. Now go back to the layer and let's put this in a folder. I'll rename the folder as render. Now click on Vector Mask icon. You can now see the black part is hidden. Turn off the layer visibility of the render for a while. Add a new layer for the background image and name it Background. Now import the background you want. Copy the background by clicking Ctrl A and Ctrl C, then paste it to the background layer by typing Ctrl V. Click on the visibility of the render to see the background at its back. Now to reposition the sky, just go to the image at the top above. Click on Free Transform or Ctrl T for shortcut. Then you can drag the image upon your preferred location. Next up, add adjustment layer to control the general brightness of your background. Just move this tab to your desired level. For Vibrance, add another adjustment layer. Select Vibrance. The properties table will appear. Adjust the bar to make the image more or less vibrant as you prefer. When you drag it to the right, the vibrance increases, and it decreases its color when you drag to the left. This time, I like to put it to positive 20. You can also adjust its saturation as you desired. We can see the difference of our work when we turn on or off the eye mark, which is the layer visibility. To complete our background, let's add a light ray flare effect. Let's open this flare image as saved. Copy and we will paste this in our render. On top of Vibrance, create a new layer. Then paste the light flare we just copied. You can freely rotate it or change its orientation by clicking at the Edit tab. Then select Free Transform or Control T. Right-click on the image and select Flip Vertical to rotate it upside down. Then drag the image to the position you want. Then change the image to Screen Mode. This softens the image. The black will disappear and the white parts will retain and be brightened. You can also change the opacity if you like. Now our background is finished. Let's then proceed to enhance our render image by working with render elements and adjustment layer. First, import the VRA extra text element to our image. It's this black and white render element. Copy and paste this to our render. 
make a new layer and paste it on. I'll rename this to V-Ray Extra Text. Then change this into Multiply Mode. This removes the white and retains the black, making the image sharper and more refined. You can also adjust its opacity if you want. Next step, import the VRA reflection element. This is the image's reflection showing every material or elements that reflects. Copy and paste this to our rendering. Create a new layer. Then, paste the reflection render element. I'll rename this as V-Ray Reflection. Change this layer to screen mode. This increases the reflection value of the render. But in this case, the reflection is too much. We can decrease it by going to opacity and type 50%. Now its reflective effect was lessened. This time, import the refraction element. Copy and paste this to our render. This is the translucent value of an image. Let's create first a new layer, then paste the refraction element. Rename the layer to V-Ray Refraction. This refraction render element increases or decreases the translucent value of an image. Now change it to Screen Mode. You can see the difference by turning on and off the layer visibility. If the refraction is too much, then again, you can change the opacity value. We reduce the opacity value to make it look more natural. Now that we're done with the background, let's enhance the general brightness of our building. Create a new adjustment layer, then go to Levels. Adjust the bar of its properties to your desired brightness. Drag the arrow to the left or right to see the change of levels. We can now see the difference of its levels once we turn on and off its layer visibility. Our image is almost halfway done. The background sky is finished, and the building is on its ideal level of brightness. Now we will retouch its foreground. This time, we'll revise the road. Here, we want to retouch this road to adjust its levels. Let's click on this arrow beside the folder to hide the folder contents. This makes our layers uncluttered, hiding some elements we don't need to use at the moment. Then we make a new layer. Now go to V-Ray Wire Color and copy the render element. Then 
go back to the render and paste it to the new layer we just created. V-Ray Wire Color Render makes it easier for us to select any element we want to pick because of its color differences. Just like what we did to the others, I'll rename this layer to V-Ray Wire Color. One standard tip, it's important to name your layers accordingly for its easy identification, especially when you have many layers created. We can also turn off and on the visibility for this layer. Now turn on visibility for wire color and select the road by its render ID layer. Click on contiguous and deselect other elements that is not included in our road by pressing Alt while using the rectangular marquee tool. While the road is selected, turn off the wire color layer to view our image. Then add an adjustment layer for the road. Choose Levels. Adjust the levels to your preference. We can use Brush tool to mask on the image in areas you want to be darker or lighter. We can see the difference from the old road to this new one when we turn on and off its layer visibility. Drag the wire color on top of our layer. Now, I want to give this road a wet effect. Let's open the wet floor image I previously saved. Copy this image and paste it in our rendering. Make a new layer first, then paste the image we just copied. Then change it to soft light mode. Now we can see that this is almost blending with our image. Go to edit and click on free transform to move the image on your desired position. You can also press Ctrl T for its shortcut. We can see the difference when we click on and off its layer visibility. Use the magic wand tool. Select the road by its render ID and deselect other elements not included. Go back to the wet floor image and click on Add Vector Mask to show only the wet floor on the road. Now, here is the road with a nice wet effect all the way until the end. If the wet looks too much for you, you can always go to Opacity to adjust on your desired percentage. Let's say 80%. You can also use the brush tool to dab on some areas you want to retouch by using the black color of the brush. You can paint on these areas where you think shadow will be more apparent. I want to add more highlight on some area of the wet road to make it brighter. Let's highlight this part where the street light is located. Select the road by its render element ID. Deselect others not needed. Turn off the layer and add another layer mask to adjust its level. Make it brighter. Then click on the mask. Use the brush tool and paint it using black color on the area you wanted to dim out to highlight your desired parts.
Now you can see that we achieved to highlight this part of the road. Let's now put vignette to our image. Create a new adjustment layer and click on Gradient. The gradient fill will appear. Choose the black with transparent fill. Then tick on Reverse, click Dither, then put the scale of 155. Then click on Radial for its style. You can see that it created a black vignette around the image. Now, if all else is fine with you, then you can click OK. Change the gradient layer to soft light mode and reduce its opacity to 15%. You can see the slight difference when you turn on and off the visibility layer. So here goes our finished image, retouched using Photoshop Basic Post Process Guidelines. For more videos, please subscribe to our channel. Just click the subscribe button below. Thanks for watching everybody. See you till our next tutorial.